Hi guys, Shamian here from Food by Shamian. I hope all is well. I am getting ready to cover for you all Trinidad and Tobago fried pies. I am going to do uh, cheese and fish. I'm going to be using for my fish white albacore tuna. It's my preferred tuna. The brand isn't important. I just prefer the white albacore chunk tuna. And even um, if I'm not using albacore, which is very rare, I always go with the chunk. I don't like the texture of the flakes, okay? So I'm going to start by uh, kneading my dough simply, simply because simply because the dough will require some resting time and i always say i come on here to teach not look fancy so if you have dough that require resting time and you have other ingredients to prep so it's only making sense that you you know do your dough first so that it will rise within the time that you're prepping your other ingredients i've already sifted my flour you all know i sift my flour using my sifter that's four cup of flour exactly four cups if it's the first demo of my own that you are watching, I take this time to welcome you. I appreciate you uh, very much. To my returning subscribers and viewers, uh, you all are appreciated greatly by me. Uh, so this is what my sifter looks like. If you don't have a sifter, use a hand and strainer, what is known internationally as a sieve, to uh, sift your flour. I always sift my flour for everything that I'm doing. Today, I am not going to proof my yeast. Proof. Proofing of yeast is a fancy name, a culinary world for setting yeast in liquid. I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to uh, get it directly into my flour and so forth. The brand of yeast that you will want to use that's solely on you. I happen to prefer this brand. I like it a lot. I'm not endorsing. I don't do any, uh, any sponsored content just yet on my channel. So I'm going to get the yeast directly in to my bowl of flour how much uh persons you want to feed or the, uh depending on the size of pies you're gonna have to use the flour to suit okay doubling up on a recipe means just that you multiply whatever measurement by two you want to triple you you know what you have to do okay you don't have any questions or so forth you all know i'm here for it just comment below i'm using just a bit of salt from my uh, stonewall kitchen brand sea salt uh i got it at the one of a kind specialty gluten free gourmet store here in west trinidad book foods i have an entire feet here on them please check it out right here on my channel so i'm going to put a bit of sugar time and time again i spoke about when you are using yeast you always need it needs to feed on sugar i'm going to use some granulated sugar this is about three tablespoons I'm going to use, I'll say one. You don't want that dough too sweet, okay? You just want to incorporate everything whenever you are working with yeast. Please don't use room temperature water or liquids of any type. It's not going to set. Uh, it's not going to make your to activate what i always do is use tempered liquids uh, by that i mean special temperature if it's too hot it will kill the yeast so you will have a dough that's not going to rise at all and if it's too cold if your liquid is too cold, the same thing goes, okay? So I'm just making my well. Just want to make sure everything is incorporated and then you do your well. When you get your water, remember always slowly add because you can't always add. You can't fake a wee when you are making those and so forth. So I'm going to get straight into it. The water, I will say, when you, when you see your dough, uh... A desired smooth consistency all in one ball that's when you know you are done using your liquids of any type because not all the time we use only water okay so I'm gonna add a bit more I'm using my spatula you all know I don't tell uh, I, I barely coming my hands barely coming to contact with whichever do I'm working with okay the spatula and the spoons do the exact same job, believe it or not. Only when I'm ready to form, really, my doughs can come into contact with my hands. So here it is that I don't need any more water because the dough is incorporated. Flour and water is well incorporated. This is what I was uh, explaining to you guys. That's when you will know that you're ready. You just need a bit more for dusting. Just a bit more. And you put it to relax but as it is here i'm going to just leave it to relax i'm going to put the additional bit when i'm ready to form my dough into my pies okay 
so I've explained that and I'm just moving on to do the filling part of things now because you all know I don't ever leave out any part whatsoever when I'm covering a demo you want to leave your door to rise without anyone messing with it whatsoever not in your refrigerator no way else but just room temperature on your counter okay when no one is troubling it because a lot of times once the door if just the slightest movement it causes it to you know somewhat you know deflate okay so i'm just going to move it because i'm going to get on to doing other stuff so it's on to the uh filling for my pies remember i said it's cheese and fish pies okay so in my processor i already have some of the uh cheddar that we access here locally if you're a vegetarian you know what you have to look for uh let me just say i didn't say why i was doing the dough so let me cover quickly one packet of yeast is always equivalent to one tablespoon i am speaking uh tablespoon as in measuring sets in the culinary world when you are making those and baking and such you don't ever want to use eating utensils to measure because you're going to end up the product that is off okay you want to invest in your measuring sets so one packet of yeast is exactly this one tablespoon always okay anytime you see that in a recipe they are just speaking about one packet equivalent to this i'm moving on so i already have some of my cheese going in my processor i am just going to finish uh getting it grated or shredded and i am going to show you guys how i prepare it for the filling for my pie okay You always want to mix in big bowls i speak about that all the time you don't want to use small stuff to mix and so forth and you're going to have a hard time it's going to just give you a hard 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 time it's not going to make sense same goes with if you are seasoning and such okay it's always better when you are doing stuff if you have too much filling or too much than not enough okay So I'm just gonna get out my, my cheddar into my uh, mixing bowl. When, when I'm doing fried pies, okay, I don't just put the cheddar in my pie like that. It's, if, you've, if you have ever done that or you have ever eaten fried pies from persons that just put the cheese just like this in the pie, it have no taste. It's more like a rubbery, just a, a blob of tasteless, bland cheese. So I'm going to do kind of like uh, a cheese paste method and then I am going to get it into my pie. So I'm going to start by using a blend of fresh seasonings that was made just for this. This is celery, some, uh, this is a blend of fresh seasonings here. A lot of red pimentos in there uh, so this is some celery onions and local pimento so I'm just gonna incorporate I'm gonna add also a bit of mayo I always 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 use imported mayo always I get a lot of questions about it if you want to know which brand this is how it looks it looks very like much like it's whipped I love it because I don't get that high vinegar taste and, and so forth and so forth, okay? You don't want it too creamy because remember it's going into the pie, but you don't want that dry. That dry cheddar thing that, you know, locally some persons will put, I'm not knocking anybody, I'm just speaking, okay? That you will have in, in fried pies. I don't like it. So I had to come up with a way to counteract that, if you will, to for intense flavor in my cheese pies. And this is the method that I came up with. If you have cream cheese and for some reason you might be somewhat against eating eggs, use cream cheese in place of this. If you are watching your way, use unflavored uh, yogurt in here. Use some good quality yogurt. Probably the Greek yogurt might be best. Wow, there went some of my cheese. It's okay. It's okay. I always tell you all I'm a real cook. So let's get to my fork in to get more incorporated, you know. I remember I said uh don't put too too much mayo like if you are doing cheese paste, okay? But it's pretty much the steps like cheese paste. So 
So let me just mix a little bit to make sure it's incorporated and that starts. I'm going to get it into my smaller bowl and I'm going to move on to preparing my albacore for my... Uh, you can put a, a bit of uh, black pepper in here and some trash, crush, sorry, crushed chili flakes, red chili flakes for a little bit of heat. Okay? But make sure everyone that's going to partake or have of it, they are able to cook with heat. Not everybody likes pepper. Right, so I'm just going to transfer it into my clean bowl. You all know I do things a certain way. I'm not saying that we don't have good local products, okay? I happen to use a lot of local stuff. Uh, but the majority of the ingredients I use is imported stuff. We have a lot of good local stuff. It's just that everyone has their preferences and I prefer a lot of things that's imported. So don't go say I said that I don't like local stuff. That's not the truth. I use a lot of local stuff a lot of times. But my preference lies with a lot of the imported or international brands. So this is what we look like. This is our filling for our fried pies. Our cheese filling at that. Those of you that are familiar with my cheese base demo, you always know the steps that I took. You always see that there's a difference that I'm not going to do certain things that I did on that demo. So I always do things differently a lot of times still. Okay? So I'm moving straight on to dealing with the uh you want to keep this refrigerated until you're ready for it i'm going to move straight on to doing the the tuna the fish please come by with some clear cling wrap you, you notice my bowl is shaped somewhat oblong okay so cling is a brand i'm not promoting brand whichever clear food safe wrap you use go ahead and use it or get it into a container that have um covers for it. I don't like plastic. I don't like plastic dishes. I don't like plastic ways. A lot of times I use new uh, conditioning caps or what we call here in Trinidad and Tobago uh, steam caps for, <laughs> you know, covering my, my bowls and such. I'm going to now get on to opening my tuna. I am going to use my electric hand opener. You won't be hearing me when it's running, okay? The brand of Tuna isn't important. A lot of you already know which brand it is just by looking at it already there. Sometimes these gadgets can be a bit pest, pesky to use. I'm telling you all the truth. But you don't ever get frustrated in your kitchen. There's a certain way that it must be aligned for it to work. And there we go. Please hold on to it. Please. Now this is why I only use the, um, the albacore tuna and I prefer it a lot. The white albacore. This is what the texture of it. Let me open the next can and let me just get to doing the... Don't ever leave things to sit in, 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 uh, in the cans and so forth, okay? These, uh, these cans and such are coated with some chemicals and once it opens it breaks up. You want to strain out the, the, the broth that it's in. Use a seed or what is called a, a strainer here, and a strainer here in Trinidad and Tobago and you know get all your liquids, your broth out of that. But also use a, a fork to get all the extra liquids, okay? I will say, I would say, honestly speaking, you never had tuna until you had albacore tuna. It's very, very different in texture, taste, everything. I am going to and you all know the benefits of uh tuna it's amazing i'm just going to get uh my 
my seasonings directly into my tuna. Directly into here. Remember, it's the same seasoning blend. If you want, you can add just a bit of uh, fine thyme and some ginger. Ginger is very good in fish. You don't want to overpower this now. Eh? Also, a bit of uh, a fish powdered seasoning. Really good brand. For my international friends, you can use Old Bay. I use Old Bay a lot also. Okay? Uh, for my Trini, my fellow Trinidadians, there's one particular brand I like. Comment below. I'm not going to call you a brand. Uh, I'm not going to call you a brand that I prefer. I'm just going to show you guys what it looks like. I'm going to put some onto my spoon that I took off my seasonings with to show you guys the texture of this local seasoning that I happen to love a lot, this fish seasoning. This is what it looks like. When you're using it, please don't use any salt. I'm not gonna use all of it, it is a bit too much. You all know how I feel about salt, right? I have some fresh, freshly squeezed uh, lime juice. I'm gonna get it straight in there. However, you can get your juice out your limes, please you please do it. I use a rima a lot of times. It's a wooden device for citrus fruits. I'm gonna just throw all my lime, okay? You want that nice lime coming through. And this is what I love about the other core. You have to actually get it apart so you can do it however small or however uh, big you so desire. I don't mess with white albacore too much. I don't put too much of stuff in it. I, I love it just as it is. But remember, it's, it's fish pie, so you don't want too, too much of chunks. If I was doing something else with it, I was going to let it stay as chunky as possible. You can just drizzle, I would say, about a tablespoon of olive, extra virgin olive oil in here once you have it on hand. Grape seed oil is going to be fine in here also too, just for that additional bit of moisture. But keep in mind, it's fry pie. So if you watch your weight, it might not be necessary at all. It won't be dry. And I'm not going to cook it on the stove. This is the only step that I'm going to take with it. The lime in there is absolutely amazing. You all see how the fresh seasonings look. You can use Chardon Benny in it. Feel free. Uh, if you don't know Chardon Benny, it's a herb, it's a, a herb that's native, a green herb, to uh, some Caribbean nations at all. Okay? So, I think I've showed you all, all these steps. Remember all that I've said. And I am going to get ready to do uh, the frying or the putting together of these pies. So, just watch and I'll show you guys. So, it's on to... Uh, filling my pie or filling my pie the dough it's been resting right so i'm going to take it first let me just speak about some tools that you know make frying of pies somewhat easier if you will and so forth you all know i love gadgets i love anything that is going to help or aid with making any chef or cook's life easier be it professionally or just a home cook if you're just a home cook so this set was 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 given it's a gift that was given to me by one of food by shamian international administrators and i love it a lot i'm gonna show you guys it's three pieces i'm not gonna use it today but i'm just showing you guys it is sold locally or i did know of a store that sold them or had them on sale uh comment below if you want to know and i'm gonna tell you exactly where it was sold locally so this is what they look like i'm just showing you guys because some of you, believe it or not, you might actually own this. Or you might have to see this and you're trying to figure out, okay, what, what's it for? So you have the three sizes, okay? This being the larger one, of course, and, you know, smaller. We have three sizes, large, medium, small. And you use it, it opens, and, you know, it, it, it opens like this. This is the side you're going to use to make the impression of the circle. And then you're going to get it inside of here and fold it. And you have your perfect pie just thought I'll show you guys that if in case some of you have it and you might be wondering okay you know you can use it for this purpose but I'm gonna do it old school way I'm gonna use the, uh, the fork method you know to get it done 
so like I say my dough is my gorgeous filling cheese and fish the dough it's it's been resting you all know I did it before I did everything else I'm just going to get some flour into it I'm using my sifter flour no matter how well you store it it always have lumps so that's why I sift everything, no matter how well that just happens. And time and time again on demos, I showed you guys, if I didn't uh, sift my flour, what would have been in my doughs and batters. I showed you all. So I'm just giving one knee before, and it's deflated. Some persons, you know, they will deflate it uh, by, you know, someone sticking it, but I already uh, deflated just by doing a second knead, if you will. I'm going to get straight into things, frying. This isn't hard isn't hard whatsoever and for those of you that love fried foods and fried pies you won't be able to make your own for now so just let me get my flour on here again i'm going to use what is known in the culinary world as a bench knife it's a beloved tool in the culinary world makes our life very easier or easy more easy uh, when we are doing pastry work so I'm just going to cut my dough in equal parts and then I'm gonna move from there this is what the bench knife looks like when you have to do the different folds with the pastry it just somehow it's just amazing for that right so of course the bigger pieces will be somewhat the middle pieces will be somewhat bigger you all see what I'm speaking about, but I'm going to adjust and, you know, work to suit. I'm not going to make those things a problem. It's just about wisdom. Everything in life is wisdom, including cooking, okay? I'm just going to get down, I think, probably one of each pie, just to show you guys the final product, and that's it. I'm not going to have you all just stay here and watch me do all of this pie. Let me get the half that I'm not using out of here. Make sure your foods they are handled and stored safely okay even after cooking and preparing make sure to take good care with things like that i always say when we are cooking we always aim to have uniform slices and sizes and everything because it, it makes for even cooking all right so remember i said i'm just going to do one of each one of the fish one of the cheese and show you guys the final presentation of them but I know you guys saw how easy it was to get this together. I know you guys saw. I am going to be using my deep fryer. Traditionally here in Trinidad and Tobago, when we are doing fry pies, it's done in a pot. Don't say I didn't keep it authentic because I use a deep fryer. The deep fryer makes my life easier. Okay, so I have my deep fryer already going. You want to make sure when you have a deep fryer, be very careful a lot of things if you are a person with seafood allergies and you fry shrimp for instance in there you cannot uh put anything that is not shell food in there and serve persons that have shell food allergies you also want to filter your oil very regularly or discard of the oil altogether and reuse because you're going to have some bad looking final results if you use oil that's very uh age to put your stuff in and you all understood that so i'm going to move right on I tell you what the deep fryer, the word, the name gives it away. Everything is cooked evenly, you don't have to turn and so forth and so forth. Yes, you can accomplish the same results in a pot, more or less, but it's still somewhat different. It is still somewhat different, I can tell you that. But if you have a pot, just put as much oil as you can. I'm going to just roll out my, uh, my dough and I'm going to start the filling process. a lot of flour and that's why I'm using my pastry mat it may come up as a question what is that you was uh, using what you had the dough on it is a pastry mat it might be called by other names it's, it's just a mat you know I love it a lot actually it makes it not easier it's folded in half it's very huge mat it have different sizes of course the size of your pie it's all on you I'm going to start by uh, using my cheese first. Huh? 
second by side, I'm going to do it all soon, not all right. I'm going to just use my fork and press my edges. So let me just spin my pie so that I can have more control as to what I'm doing. And this is the fork method that we use here. Not only in Trinidad, I know a lot of persons use it internationally for different things. Some persons in Spanish nations use it to get their, uh, I think it's empanadas. Sometimes, depending on what I'm doing, I don't really like to see these four prints, okay? I'm just being honest, but I'm using it today because this is the easiest method that a lot of you, this is the step that you're going to take to seal your pan. It looks a bit rustic and nice for some persons, I will admit, some persons love that. I'm going to get the first one, the cheese, down into my the fryer. Okay, and then I'm going to fill, I'm going to fill a, a fish one, like I said, and we're going to move on from here. You all saw how easy that was, right? So I'm going to put down the boat to fry together. And it's on to use in my, uh, my fish. Also, I use two tablespoons of cheese, right? Of my cheese skin. We're gonna just average this fish. You don't wanna overstuff it, but you don't want it. Um, so, about here is where I'm gonna leave the fish, okay? See beautiful chunks we have. You don't want it too chunky, like I said. I'm gonna fold it over again. Same step. Same step. You want to just somewhat press it because you don't want too much of a uh, belly, so to speak, on your pies, okay? You don't want it too flat, but you don't want too much of belly. Press with enough pressure because you are sealing when you are doing this method. It's not just to look fancy. So apply somewhat enough pressure. It's going to keep it together. You don't want to, you know, while frying, it's opening on you. I'm just going to come a bit closer to the camera because I want to see the stuff. And easy like that, I'm gonna get the pies down. Both of them to get done. That's what they look like. I'm gonna get them down to fry. It's new oil. I am using canola oil. It's my preferred oil for frying. And of course, I'm going to show you all the loveliness that you will have when it's finished uh, frying. So just keep watching and I'm going to show you guys, okay? So guys, this is the uh, final product of our Trinidad and Tobago fried pies, cheese and fish to be exact. It's fried to perfection. You all see how it looks. I'm just going to take it out and I'm going to cut it to the for you guys to see. You want to always make sure when you drain your fried stuff, okay? I am going to show you all also how soft it is. I am just going to use some loose of paper. Uh, you can use paper towel if you so desire to get this excess oil off, okay? So that's good on the pies there. I just want to show you guys how soft they are. That's so soft for the fries, so it's just springing back up. I just want to cut into it for you all to see the texture of what we have on the inside. I want to cut into them both, okay? Dehydrated parsley flakes, you know, I love parsley in any uh, way or form that I can have it. It doesn't matter if it goes all over, it makes it look pretty. 
and that's where I'm going to leave it. I'm going to show you and divide the texture of it on the inside. This is our fish pie, what it looks like on the inside. That chunk of albacore tuna is ridiculous in there. And this is our cheese pie on the inside. All that gooey, nice. Those of you that love cheese, I can hear you right now. Guys, it's a pleasure. It was my own as always. You all know Food by Shami and we are all over social media. If you are new, I'm telling you that we are all over social media. We are on Instagram, we are on Facebook, and of course, the YouTube channel. All under one name, Food by Shami. If you want to come into direct contact with me, and you are somewhat shy to speak with me publicly, be it on comments on whichever uh, social media platform, send me an email on foodbyshamion at shimi.com. Please use our common letters. Our website, you can be found on website address www.foodbyshamion.com. Guys, I thank you all for all your amazing love and support. I thank you all for watching. The pleasure of doing this was my own. Until I'm with you all, bye.